Price or Lola here to do those yeah. more instinctive things. Either you're right, it's it it, it it was it was well 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 mapped out. You gotta give uh, it was, Radford it, and Cass credit. It felt very classic Radford tactics. Yeah, it, it, yeah. It, this is this was not your Daryl Powell Castleford, but it was an effective winning Castleford. Yeah. Um, the the late scores. I I don't think it was because of the six again count. I think it was because McShane got sent to the sim bin, which was definitely deser- deserved. He got that um, tackle wrong. He put the player in a dangerous position. Yes. It, it was a rightfully a sim bin. He's got a grade B dangerous throw charge. Rightfully a one match penalty notice. Obviously he's got a relatively decent record overall, helping that only be one match. Um, so I think that's fair. It, it flattered Huddersfield a little bit because they couldn't create against this Castleford defence how well it played but you know very much before that last sort of eight minutes or so when they had the extra man um so yeah uh that that's my notes on things did you have any other notes on on the game no I found it was one of those matches that it was quite hard to actually make many notes on because it was just Cass getting in Huddersfield's face then you know then scoring and then getting in um, yeah, I know how, what you mean. It was two things doing, two teams doing the same sorts of things for eighty minutes, and one team yeah. executing their game plan way better than the other. Yeah. <laughs> um, Nathan Massey got a Grade B dangerous contact charge one match penalty notice. That was for a late tackle. Trying to work out where this was in the game because it's not easy because they don't put what player the offence was on anymore in the notes right. in the minutes, and they put a time, but it's not the game clock time. It's the time on the footage or I don't know anyway but I think it might have been on Daniel Levi where he hit him late after a dummy half pass which again maybe goes back to those tactics yeah uh, getting in his face dropping and make good ta- uh, offloads yeah so he was executing his, his game plan but maybe stepped over the line there in terms of the match review panel uh, we talked about Truman's ACL that's added to by Ryan Hampshire pretty much certainly having the, the, the rest of the season out as well um, so he he only had a deal to the end of this year with Cass, so he might have played his last game for Cass for now as well. He, a, another ACL injury for Ryan Hampshire. So Castleford will be looking for a pivot, you, you'd have to say, um, for the rest of the season now with, with those injuries. Yeah, yeah. I was, um, uh, I was following a, a Twitter conversation between a group of Castleford fans discussing, you know, where they, what they think will happen. Um you know who who they'll go with there at the weekend. Um, a few different um, names put forward, but well, I'm a fan of going for uh, youth, so I think it might end up being Westerman. <laughs> um, well, Gareth O'Brien's still injured, isn't he? And Nia Levels is not quite right. He might be back at fullback, but still doesn't necessarily answer the halfback. But it's it's a tricky one. Um, and then they'll be competing maybe with you guys to try and find another halfback for the rest of the year. You found some players for some other positions that we'll get onto in a minute, but not another halfback yet. So, um, so yeah, we will see. And let's move on to your game, actually. Hull FC versus Leeds. I'm sure you're delighted to talk about this one. Um, let's start with a big positive. 10,360 on a sunny Saturday afternoon. Good crowd at Hull. Liam Moore was the referee to see... Um, Half-time scoreline of 22-10 to the visit in Leeds Rhinos. And then that blow apart in the second half to be 62 points to 16 win by Leeds. Um, Leeds made over 550 more metres at 1.7 metres per carry better average gain. So basically comprehensive. Kept Hull under 850 metres. So better with and without the ball. Leeds also made fewer errors. And had a... One of, you know, best part of 100 metres of that was an interception try. <laughs> yeah, true. Um l- Leeds or uh, made fewer errors, had 11 breaks to two, scoring 12 tries to three. Uh, another comprehensive stat win with Leeds was tackle success rate, which was 8.2% better. Hull had an 83% team tackle success rate. The only key stats Leeds lost, actually, was the penalty count in a relatively low 4-6 penalty count. Um, what about the individuals? <sighs> Uh, yeah, so individually, Ash Hanley with five tries, 204 metres, four clean breaks. Mikhail Lechsky with one try, 136 metres. Liam Sutcliffe with one try, two try assists and 116 metres. 
Richie Miner with one try, five try assists, 100 metres and two clean breaks. Uh, for Hull, it was one... Uh, Chris Satai with one try, nine tackle busts, 115 metres, three offloads. How many of them nine tackle busts do you reckon came on that try? <laughs> Half of them? <laughs> yeah, probably. Darnell McIntosh with one try, 111 metres, and Liggy Sauer with 111 metres. Uh, always in our shadow kicks things off, as they normally do for Hull. Said 62 points, Leeds must have been good. No. FC were that shy, no one prepared for the effort uh, in defence. Effort from Satay in attack, but little else to write home about. Just the normal two injuries this week. God help us next week. Uh, B. Dawson, 1902, said, Utter garbage from start to finish. No fight, no desire, and completely brain dead. Leeds were good, but didn't have to do much to take total control. I thought being just 10-22 down at half-time completely flattered us. Shaw, Griffin, and Houghton are, best, uh, are past it. Loverdua is a nine, and Hookham, unfortunately, isn't ready. Barnforth came on when the rest of the team already gave up. I didn't expect to win, but that was embarrassing. Esther said, what a bag of poo. Tackling non-existent. I think the stats support that, don't they? Uh, Players unable to match up at scrum. Leeds really should have scored more. We were that rubbish. Yep. Joshua's granddad said, positives, satire going forwards. Negatives, too many to count. Lack of leadership from senior players. Defensive structure and effort non-existent. Unable to match up at scrums. Wakey couldn't buy a win before us. Wire couldn't buy a win before us. Leeds couldn't buy a win. Bet KR can't work. <laughs> and Leighton Rhino, to finish it off on a high, said, The misery and woe from Radio Humberside commentators on this was a joy to behold. The highlight showed our attack has been smithified and looks peachy as long as our pack isn't dominated. I wish we could just magic up two decent props so we can function like this against non-cracked slash non-crocked slash decent sides. Rowan should have tapped up Satai on the way out for a 2023 chat. Um, I'm guessing you're in a similar vein to your uh, black and white friends there with, with how you judge this match. Yeah, I mean, like, two people have mentioned about not matching up at the scrum. Like, surely it's basics. There's five players to the right of the scrum. How many players in defence do you put to the right of the scrum? Two. How stupid. This, this like, So what that's saying is when the fullback's got his head in the scrum, there's no one else talking to each other. Exactly. To, and to why, number put, up. why put a fullback in the scrum? Well, we've done I, it for... Like, all teams have done it for about a decade now, haven't they? But I know, but I still don't it, like it. Well, it's got to start being rethought, hasn't it? Because teams have come out of the the break away from scrums with... And this is across the board. We talk about it every week, but there was two more, weren't there, from Leeds, I think, scrum tries in this game. But, like, they've come out... Attacks have come out with a better um, plan for scrums than defences has. And defensive have... Defences hasn't haven't caught up as much as they should have done, and maybe one of the things is take your player who numbers up out of the scrum. Maybe even put him at the halfback position, so then he can still kind of scan the field to number up. Yeah, but surely it's just like basics. You'd think. You'd think. Yeah, I agree. Um, like the match actually was the fact that when we scored our third try to Leeds and then had to do like this weird like changing the score down one point at a time and then putting ours on we had 13 points and they had three at one point it it was you know that was the excitement level (laughs) Uh, well no there was the Houghton try I mean, that was a lovely little inside kick from Connor Wynn on the outside of his his foot. That that was good, wasn't that, it? That was nice. Yeah, that was nice. Sorry, I forgot about that. Yeah. Well, that was sort we of, what, him... midway through the first half, so there was a lot of things to forget about that with after that, wasn't there? Including five tries yeah. from Ash Hadley. Yeah. yeah. My friend's little boy started playing rugby. Uh, he's been, he, he might have had his first match tonight. He's seven. Um. And we said, well, come to a Saturday afternoon match. We'll take you along. And um, partway through, he turns to me and says, Sarah, this really isn't making me want to come and watch again. (laughs) And I said, you know what? I understand. (laughs) Um, 
yeah, it, it did just seem like Leeds executed the, the set plays really well and Hull didn't execute defensively on them, didn't react to things. Like the, the tries from the scrums was one part of that, but um, Lehman's first try, not from a scrum, but that was clearly a set play. And it's it's what they've looked yeah. to do when Myler's at fullback, those little in, quick inside balls. Um, it was a lovely score. Decent scrambling effort from Hull FC to try and stop that one, actually. Uh, but it was still well, a lovely score. Sorry, go on. Yeah. No, no, I mean, it was a decent scrambling effort to stop that one, but that was about the only one. Well, that's it, because I was going to say, conversely to that one, Lehman's second try in the second half was an absolute embarrassing one defensively for Hull, because basically it was 20 metres... It was a 20 meter scoop from dummy half. He was completely untouched. Didn't even look like any Hull defenders anticipated that Cruz Leeming, someone who runs from dummy half quite a bit in in a lead side that run from dummy half quite a bit, could have possibly run from dummy half. Um, so it, it kind of gave that summed up picture of what was a mix of Leeds being good, but also Hull being poor. Like, to be honest, I am genuinely surprised that our tackle success rate was as high as 83%. <laughs> that bad, You know, it? It, it was that bad. And, um, I mean, uh, so, oh, sorry, we'll talk about discipline in a minute. No, yeah, get, let's get on to it, because um, if it wasn't bad enough with all the injuries that whole FC have, have got with um, Jake Connor out, they're also... Um, and, you know, add to that some of the other guys uh, as well, like Swift and people, um, and Tim of Harvey, big, big player. Sam Scott got a very nasty injury during the game as well. Oh, that's which... unfortunate. It, it seems like every time big... he gets two games together, he gets an injury, that kid. I know. Not the least what it is yet, which always makes you wonder, worry more. Yeah, yeah. Um, but he was out for a long time and then he they got the stretcher, but in the end, two people, you know, he put his arms around them and, well, I don't think he even hopped. I think they literally just carried him. Right. And then the three suspensions, uh, Kane Evans, grade B high tackle. It's not his first of the year, so he's got a too, too much penalty noise. Jordan Johnston, a grade B dangerous throw, too much penalty noise for him as well. And Liggy Sal, Liggy Sal did challenge this one, but it was upheld by the... Um, independent disciplinary panel tonight so the match review panel's charge of grade b over contrary behavior too much penalty notice for liggy sow as well so um on top of all the injuries that's three players banned as well for a couple of weeks i mean it, it, it's pretty dire isn't it yeah so the kane evans one i saw in the match you can get to that in his defense the player was falling as he went and I think, you know, that is a slight mitigating factor. It, you know, it's hard always to get your arm out of the way. Yeah. The other two, I don't know what they were for. I mean, as in, I, I wasn't aware of them in the match at all. The Sal apparently was kicking, but, yeah, I don't know. Um, but one thing, both that has been picked up by the disciplinary was crusher tackles. There was one on Jamie Shaw and one on Jack Brown. Both of them were just in front of us. I mean, Jamie Shaw really looked to be in quite a bad way from his. Um, the referee didn't stop play at all, even though it was, you know, a head injury and he was holding his neck. Um, so I'm surprised that that didn't get any mention. Maybe they just lost, you know, lost the will to live with watching the match review. <laughs> yeah, well, obviously I've not I, seen it at all, so I I can't comment. But and I, I can't blame them because I am um, I wouldn't want to sit through it again. I was gonna say that's what I was gonna say. Like you wouldn't you wouldn't have the will to go back and watch the incidents and figure out which ones were charges and which ones maybe looked worse in in real time and, and weren't the same when you see him back yeah, and stuff like that. I, yeah. I think all three of the ones that were uh, being picked up for us were um, in the first half. So that's possibly, you know, possibly why nothing's being picked up from the second half. But yeah. they switched off. Fair enough. I think it's fair that um, we talked a bit about the Leeming tries and stuff. I think it's fair that we call out uh, Ash Hanley talk a bit about him. He got he got five tries and there was some decent pace from him and some tight finishes. A couple of them getting around the last man and stuff, but also a few where he was really just put into space by the guys inside him with some good play. But five tries is a good effort. What I wanted to give him 
pull out credit for and actually the sort of thing that I always like.